Hello, 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 hello. So today tuendelee na kipindi cha pili katika pathology. Kipindi cha kwanza tu discuss meaning of pathology na tuka discuss vitu vingine pale kwenye a definition of pathology na ku differentiate baadhi ya terminologies kwenye pathology. Leo tuendelee na kipindi cha pili katika pathology na leo tu discuss kuhusu cell injury. If you don't know the normal physiology of the cell, ya namna ambavyo different organelles of the cell zinavyofanya kazi kama ambavyo tu discuss kwenye uh, cytology at advanced level. Basi utaenda kwenye description hapo chini na utaikuta link ambayo imeelezea the normal uh, physiology of the cell. But also in our Telegram group utakikuta kitabu uh, na vitabu vya physiology ambavyo watu wanavitumia katika second year you'll find them there so you use them as the uh, reference books kwa hiyo tuendelee na uh, tuendelee na hii second session ambayo inahusu cell injury so in order to know regarding the cell injury you must first know regarding the normal functioning of the cell kwamba how the cell tend to function in its normal environment eh, in its normal condition how the cell function if you know how the cell function in its normal condition it will be easier now to explain uh, regarding the uh, cell injury now one thing which you need to remember is that uh, uh, one among the things which you need to remember is that uh, every uh, kind of things which we are discussing regarding the diseases uh, the origin of a disease is within the cell so there is no disease which does not origin does not originate from the cell disease zote no zioe eh, when we are talking of cancer we are talking of um, tuberculosis eh, coronavirus disease any kind of disease it's because of the eh, destruction of the normal structure of the cell kwa hiyo seli ikiwa inafanya kazi kawaida hatuwezi tukaona disease disease inatokana na cell kushindwa kufanya kazi kawaida kwa kutegemea na huyo organism ame cause effect kwenye organel gani ya cell au ameenda kuharibu system gani ya cell so knowing the normal structure and the functioning of all organelles of the cell is very important in understanding a pathology lecture objective we are required to know how to define the cell injury then to explain the causes and the classification of cell injury and then to recognize the morphology of a cell injury and distinguish between reversible and irreversible injury no, no. so you required to uh, to know the meaning of cell injury the causes and the classification of cell injury and then to recognize the morphology of cell injury and to distinguish between reversible and irreversible cells uh, irreversible cell injury so let's go together in this uh, discussion so we'll have uh, definition, uh, classification, uh, causes, morphology, uh, then a mechanism, and then response to cell injury. Uh, actually, in, in all of these parts, we shall also see the, the mechanisms. They are the one, some of them, they are reversible, and some of them, they are irreversible. So in terms of definition, cell injury refer to a sequence of events. Uh, a sequence of events in a cell which follow when either excessive physiological stress or pathologic stimuli excessive physiological stress or pathologic stimuli what do these terms means uh, these words which are written in a, a different color in a yellow color they are very important because uh, lecturers who are making the mcq questions uh, more especially Prof. Mwakigonja is always using these terminologies to make the MCQ questions. So it's very important for you to remember these and their meaning. So excessive physiological stress, what does it mean? Manake ni kwamba, this is the normal uh, stimuli to the cell, but it exceeds the normal level. For example, ulitakiwa umpe cell kiwango flan, let's say cha, ulitakiwa umpe cell kiwango flan cha glucose. Hasa seli umempa kiwango cha glucose ambacho kimezidi unaona so that is excessive physiological stress actually 
kwenye amount ambayo inakuwa ni normal highly stress kwa sababu kwa mfano ukipa cell the usual amount of glucose it's not a stress but when it exceed now it becomes a stress if it's in its normal condition it is physiological stimuli it's just a normal physiological stimuli but if it exceed its normal amount it becomes a stress because a cell now will start to struggle how can it fight with that excessive stimuli so that's what you call uh, the excessive physiological stress so excessive physiological stress mm, let's say you may cell it when it has a function hormone then the cell is given large amount of hormone as compared to the required that means what will happen the cell will over function na kule kufanya kazi kupita kawaida then finally the cell will die because some of the activities will not be able to be regulated as usual and the second uh, and the second the cause of cell injury can be the pathologic stimuli pathologic stimuli eh? pathologic stimuli it can be due to bacteria due to the presence of virus actually pathologic stimuli it's because it's because of the presence of certain microorganism in the body uh, which produce a certain poison uh, there is a certain microorganism in the body so excessive physiological stress in atokana na normal functions of the body but they exceed the usual level but the pathologic stimuli it's because of the a substance from outside of the body let's say bacteria protozoa the virus that in the pathologic stimuli so it may be due to a variety of stresses a cell encounters in its internal or external environment as we know that there is internal environment of the cell not of an organism of the cell the internal environment of the cell that means within the cell uh, from the cell membrane what is present within the cell that the internal environment of the cell and then the external environment of the cell for example in human beings is made up of the extracellular fluid the extracellular fluid in a human being is the one which is uh, making the external environment so there might be a variety of stresses uh, there might be a variety of factors which can lead to a cell cell injury here we are, to, we are not talking of the cell death we are just talking of the cell injury cell pass the limits of adaptive response or when adaptations to such a stimuli is not possible this uh, continue to explain this continue to explain what we said in this a point of excessive uh, physiological stimuli there is a level of stimuli which can be uh, regulated or which can be uh, adapted by the cell yani cell ina uwezo ku adapt ina uwezo wa uh, kusema kwamba hii stimuli kwa sababu imezidi ngoja ni change in this way in order to cope with this stimuli but sometime when this uh, stimuli cell passes that means exceeds uh, the limits of adaptive response yani mezidi kile kiwango ambacho a cell can adapt or can change its conditions in order to cope with this condition can change its a different environment in order to cope with this a condition if it exceed these limits that means a cell cannot tolerate and finally what we will happen is the cell injury so classification of a cell injury cell, cell injury can be classified as irreversible or irreversible cell injury reversible cell injury that means a cell injury occur but when in the normal condition they are uh, restored that means the cell returns to its normal condition a reversible cell injury that means they are persistent mm? they persist if it is severe enough from the outset so um, reversible cell injury causes that and causes the irreversible cell injuries they are the same but what is the difference is that reversible cell injury uh, may be kama temperature exceed when reversible cell injury labda exceed for 2 minutes for irreversible cell injury temperature exceed like it exceed for 2 hours you see so if this cause of injury persists for the enough time it causes the irreversible cell injury or if it is severe enough that means the intensity of this cause of cell injury if it is severe enough it will cause irreversible cell injury so the difference between reversible and irreversible that irreversible cannot be brought back the cell conditions cannot be restored 
why it's because the cause of destruction of cell or the cause of cell injury persists for a long time or it is severe enough so let's see the causes of cell injury you have the exogenous causes or the external environment causes for example physical agents uh, physical agents they can cause a cell injury but also we have the angel and endogenous causes endogenous that means the internal environment for example metabolic factor metabolic factor let's say hormones uh, enzymes but also we have a congenital or acquired causes of cell injury congenital or acquired that means congenital mtu amezaliwa nayo acquired ameipata kwenye mazingira congenital amezaliwa nayo congenital acquired ameipata kwenye mazingira now let's see the the the, the causes the description of causes starting with the physical agents different physical agents can cause cell injury for example mechanical trauma mechanical trauma what is the trauma trauma actually is the severe accident let's say umesikia driver boda boda amepata ajali kichwa kimepasuka that is the trauma severe accident or major accident eh? in medicine we call it as trauma so mechanical trauma include ajali za boda boda ajali za baiskeli sio ajali za magari mtu anapata ajali anapasuka sio mguu na katika mkono unavunjika all of these kinds of accidents they cause cell injury kwa sababu unavyosema mguu umevunjika maana yake tayari the osteoclast cells of the bone they have been destructed unaona bwana but also another physical agent in the temperature extremes if you remember in uh, advanced level we started regarding the uh, importance of our uh, importance of our uh, temperature regulation in terms of enzyme actions or oh, we started about the temperature is one among the factors affecting the enzyme activity now most of people they don't know that enzymes they are very important in the body almost every function which is going on in the body it is controlled by enzymes the essential functions like glycolysis and krebs cycle for providing the body with uh, a lot of energy to perform every kind of activities they are maintained by enzymes Now remember the temperature extremes can cause the denaturation of the enzymes. So if this temperature extreme can cause the denaturation of the enzymes, that means if these enzymes they regulate let's say Krebs cycle which is uh, the process which is that to the production of a lot of ATP in the body. Ko kama hizi enzymes zina regulate Krebs cycle, if they are denatured that means Krebs cycle will stop. And what is the effect of the Krebs cycle to stop? the body will only gain energy from glycolysis and finally this energy cannot be sufficient for the survival of an organism so some cell will start to die and finally the whole living organism will finally die unaona so the reason behind this death of the cell or uh, cell injury because cell death is the irreversible cell injury yani reversible cell injury maana cell imekuwa injured but it can restore its original condition irreversible cell injury maana cell imekuwa injured but it can't restore its original condition so cell death actually it is cell death it is irreversible cell injury so temperature extremes can cause different uh, can cause different effects uh, in the cell and this effect can lead to cell injury also a uh, temperature extreme can change the fluidity of the cell membrane depending on the amount of phospholipids and how much saturated and unsaturated phospholipids they are present in the cell membranes you see so if these temperature extreme they change the fluidity of the cell membrane that means uh, there will be leakage of some of the ions to the outside of the cell or from outside to inside of the cell and the leakage of these ions will not left the cell safe so lazima stay harm cell the third physical agent here is the sudden changes in the atmospheric pressure sudden changes in the atmospheric pressure for example we have already regarding the mountain climbers in our advanced level and we learned regarding the adaptation which are acquired by the mountain climbers 
But what did we, why did we land regarding the mountain climbers? How was it important? This is because as you are moving from sea level and then you are going higher, and the pressure tends to change. Here at sea level, the pressure it is high. So it's easier for you to inhale oxygen and there is um, actually the amount of oxygen in air remains the same uh, in this atmospheric pressure and even in the mountains where the pressure is low the amount of oxygen uh, still the, the concentration of oxygen in air still remains the same but what varies here is simply pressure at sea level the pressure is one atmosphere but as, go as you are going higher the pressure is low so how does this low pressure affect the body here at sea level the pressure is high so when you inhale oxygen that means the pressure of oxygen in the lungs will be higher as compared to the pressure of oxygen in the blood vessels and this leads to the diffusion gradient here, and leads to the dif uh, diffusion of oxygen molecules from the lungs into the blood vessels you see but when you're going at the top of the mountains the pressure is low that means even when you inhale the oxygen the pressure in the lungs will be low if this pressure in the lungs is low it will be actually not such much different from the uh, pressure of oxygen in the blood vessels so it will be difficult for the oxygen uh, to diffuse from the lungs into the blood vessels as compared to the one who is at sea level so the sudden change in the atmospheric pressure can lead to cell death why it's because uh, these cells will lack oxygen so the lack of oxygen can lead to cell death as i told you up on the temperature you can be from the lack of enzymes or if the enzymes are naturally the Krebs cycle can stop and if the Krebs cycle can stop the cell can be injured and they finally can die even the lack of oxygen can lead to cell death why it's because if oxygen is not present that means electron transport chain cannot occur and the Krebs cycle cannot occur so only glycolysis will be providing energy to the body and this energy produced by glycolysis it is insufficient to sustain the body so finally the cells will die or will be injured and finally will die if the condition persists for a long time another cause is the radiation you have already regarding the x-ray to decrease the life expectancy of people actually what is the reason behind this um, this myth of uh, x-ray to decrease the life expectancy of people actually the x-ray they are one among the radiations which can kill the cells actually they don't kill all cells but they kill some cells uh, that's why some of these uh, radiations they are used in the treating cancer uh, uh, by using uh, radiations they kill some of the cells which are cancerous if this cancer is uh, at low stages as I shall see later I want to be discussing regarding uh, 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 regarding the cancers so radiation also is the cause of cell injury and finally can cause cell death also electrical shock electrical shock these are just uh, some of the physical agents which can lead to cell injury the lower chemical agents different chemical agents they lead to cell injury chemical agents and the drugs so drugs also they enter the group of chemical agents um why we have written as chemical agents and the drugs because babu chemical agents are just tunazungumzia chemical nyingine acha na drugs ko drugs nazo tumezeka hapo kwenye group ili kwamba mtu wewe anajua kwamba we have chemical agency and then we have drugs uh, drugs also they are uh, grouped together with uh, chemical agents uh, for example um, innumerable chemicals inflict cell injury uh, some of the chemicals they can cause cell injury for example glucose salt oxygen poison actually you can wonder glucose can lead to cell injury as i told you that um in medicine we are saying that uh, everything is toxic everything is toxic uh, what matters is just the amount if you are taking uh, glucose excess glucose it's it is dangerous to you excess salt it is dangerous uh, you have heard of safula in excess salt uh, in excess glucose if um, the pancreas will fail to regulate your glucose amount uh, you have heard of diabetes mellitus then uh, excess oxygen uh, all of these chemicals they can lead to 
they can lead to cell injury you see uh, poisons like arsenic cyanide uh, we have explained a lot regarding cyanide in the uh, in uh, our form 5 uh, uh, respiration also I told you, we said about the effect of cyanide in the in the oxidative respiration you know how cyanide can lead to death you see so poisons like arsenic cyanide mercury and etc also we have pollutants different pollutants insecticides and herbicides insecticides these are different medications used to kill insects in farms herbicides magugu carbon dioxide if it's in excess asbestos unaona alcohol narcotics and therapeutic drugs even these uh, therapeutic drugs if they're in excess amount they can lead to cell injury and the final cell death even these all of the therapeutic drugs use actually to my side i say that uh, drugs they don't treat the disease they just um are like prevent it uh, temporarily but they don't treat the disease they don't cure actually they can they can treat because to treat doesn't mean it's the permanent solution but they don't cure because to cure is the permanent solution to a, a patient then we also have the infectious agents like microbes and parasites what do we mean here microbes they are bacteria and viruses but the parasites in the group of parasites we have the uh, all kinds of protocols like amoeba giardia lambia and other uh, parasites immunological reactions they can lead to they can lead to cell death actually the immunological reaction they are double-edged sword double-edged sword what does it mean it's like in Swahili word what they say so in every side it cuts immunological reaction they are important to the body but also immunological reaction they are dangerous to the body sometimes so they have the dis defensive functions primarily but can be injurious they can lead to cell injury such as anaphylaxis and autoimmunity we shall discuss about these anaphylaxis and autoimmunity in uh, a later sessions either in um, this pathology session or in microbiology and the immunology so when we're dis discussing regarding immunology we shall see what is anaphylaxis and what are the autoimmune uh, autoimmune reactions in the body and their effects then also we have the genetic dearrangements these can also cause the cell injury the genetic dearrangement genetic dearrangement that means uh, this is the abnormal arrangements in the genes let's say the the basis or the structure of chromosomes and the way the number of chromosomes so this is the germline or somatic it can be germline or somatic germline that means it affects the germ cell the gamete cell the somatic is the one which affect just other cell and not the gamete cell this can lead to different effects for example gloss malformations gloss malformations gloss malformations manake ni hizi na kwani kasolo zinazoonekana gloss zinaonekana unaona kama kwenye anatomy tu kuna sema gloss anatomy gloss malformations ni kasoro zinazoonekana for example in downs syndrome down syndrome unaweza kukuta uso unakuwa kama duara kama umevimba manake vile vitu ni gloss you see them by naked eyes so they are gloss malformations but also we have the uh, subto alterations at dna level for example sickle cell anemia unaona kwa pia tunasika tuna tuna alteration at dna level ambazo hizi alteration kwa nje hazionekani a person outside looks normal but actually inside he has a problem or she has a problem for example is sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is simply the the point mutation in which one of the the one of the soluble amino acid is replaced by the insoluble amino acid is how we shall discuss this in the a second module of pathology in hematology the sickle cell anemia is simply the a point mutation or a gene mutation so one of the a soluble amino acid is replaced by insoluble amino acid and the individual outside looks normal and actually this individual is a uh, heterozygous 
or if it is the career, if it is the autozygous, or if the individual the career, he will have um, some of the lead blood cells which are normal and some of them which are uh, sickle shaped. And then also we have the nutritional imbalances. Nutritional imbalances they can lead to cell, uh, they can lead to cell injury. Come on, some combo. In our bodies, uh, all amount they should be maintained at a certain level. It should not decrease and it should not increase. For example, we have the nutritional deficiencies such as um, PEM and a vitaminosis, nutritional imbalances, and also we have some of them excess uh, excess nutrition like a hyperlipidemia. Uh, hyperlipidemia that means excess lipid hyper is excess uh, lipidemia stands for lipid so hyperlipidemia excess lipid can lead to atherosclerosis atherosclerosis is the accumulation of the fat below them uh, in the inside of the lumen of the artery that is atherosclerosis uh, and then uh, hypervitaminosis hypervitaminosis that means the excess amount of vitamins in the body that is hypervitaminosis. Now let's see the morphology of um, cell injury. Morphology of cell injury. In the morphology of cell injury, let's start discussing regarding the reversible injury. Morphology of reversible injury. Katika light microscope, tutaona nini katika reversible cell injury? Tutaona nini? Ya nizi lazimu unazijua because they appear in MCQ. Kwamba katika reversible cell injuries to how how will we observe the cell unaona katika light microscope tutaona cell swelling cell itakuwa imevimba unaona mfano mzuri wa hii hapa ni vile ambavyo unaweza kuwa umepigwa ngumi umepigwa ngumi au umeigonga sehemu unapata nundu ile nundu linatokea kwa nini kwa sababu cell swelling imetokea we shall study later why cell swelling occur actually it's because of inflammation what we call as inflammation we shall discuss it later in other sessions so swelling, selling, uh, swelling due to inability to maintain homeostasis. Inakuwa haina uwezo wa maintain the inward and outward movement of material cell in a swell. And also we can observe fat change in cells involved in and uh, dependent on fat metabolism. Some of the cells of the body they depend or they are involved in fat metabolism. For example, hepatocytes. Hepatocytes they are uh, cells of liver and the myocardial cells, the cells of the heart. The myocardial cells, actually, they don't store fat, but they use fat at the energy source uh, to provide um, efficient energy for pumping blood uh, all over the body. So, um, in this cell, what we shall see is the fat change. We will discuss later what is the fat change and how can we see a fat change, how can it be observed in a microscope. Uh, you can observe the intracytoplasmic lipid vacuole. Uh, in the cytoplasm, you can observe the vacuoles fills, filled with lipid. Uh, intracytoplasmic lipid vacuole. So, katika cytoplasm, unakona vacuoles ambao zimekuwa filled with lipid. Um, appearing in hypoxic and toxic injury. Kwa kawaida hiyo na itakue kwenye hypoxic. Hypoxic, that means a cell imekosa oxygen imekosa oxygen eh, hypoxia nikokosa oxygen and then toxic injury toxic injury labla kama kuna sumu fulani imekosa injury lakini pia you observe hydropic change hydropic hydro means water hydropic change yani water changes vitu kama vile cell swelling it's because the cell in is car filled with a, lo a lot of water and then it can swell then the uh, vacuolo degeneration vacuole in a, de in a degenerate yani in alibika the atra structure changes sasa kuna changes ndogo ndogo sasa atra structure changes ndogo ndogo katika cell kwanza plasma membrane alteration eh, blebbing plasma membrane inaweza kufanya blebbing ikafanya blunting microvid distortion microvid inaweza kuharibika myeli ni figures unaona loosening of intracellular attachments yani uh, zile sehemu ambazo uh, zile cytoskeleton components ziko zimeattach katika katika cell membrane unaona zina loose zinajiachia 
lakini pia we can observe the mitochondrial changes mitochondrial changes also we can observe dilation of endoplasmic reticulum and the nuclear alterations all of these uh, they are um, uh, mechanisms of a cell injury we shall discuss later kwamba uh, nini kinatokea labda let's say ni apoptosis nini kinatokea kwenye mitochondria nini kinatokea kwenye endoplasmic reticulum na nini kinatokea katika uh, nucleus katika gloss utaona organ palo organ palo ndo kule kuvimba unaona um organ palo ni kule kuvimba eh tago manake inajaa maji unaona and then increase the weight kwa kawaida pale ulipo ulipo jigonga sehemu para nundu para kuwa pana uzito fulani hivi yani kama ni kichwani unaona kwani kama leo kichwa kizito pale ulipo ulipo jigonga pale pana kwa kama pana ka uzito fulani it is increased it is them there is increased weight that is gross uh, things which happen morphology of irreversible cell injury uh, how the irreversible cell injury happen in light microscope we will observe membrane rupture remember here we said in light microscope we will observe plasma membrane alteration that is irreversible but in the i mean <laughs> sorry that is irreversible but in the irreversible we will observe membrane rupture it's not distortion again it's rupture membrane rupture and then we have this pass of organ eh? because the membrane rupture and what happens after the membrane rupture the organ is dispersed because this is the animal cell and it doesn't have the cell wall so the disperse of the organ after that breakdown of lysosomes eh? the lysosomes they tend to break down and when these lysosomes they, tend, they, they, they break down that means they release the enzymes to the different components of the cell and finally these are different components of the cell they are get digested by the enzymes which was uh, were stored in the lysosome there are three basic categories of nuclear changes which happen during irreversible cell injury these are karyolysis pyognosis and the karyorexis karyolysis pyognosis and karyorexis these are the three basic nuclear changes which happen during irreversible cell injury. Karyolysis means DNA breakdown. Pyognosis means nuclear shrinkage and karyorexis means nuclear fragmentation. As I told you, these terminologies which are written in yellow color they are very important because Prof Mwakigonja always used to ask these questions in the exam. And always you need to note one thing that always uh, the um, pathology and even other cause exams or they they tend to copy so they can copy the exam of um, five previous years and they can bring the questions to you so um, you can observe that the the one who the one who composed the exam is the same prof makigonja in the uh, previous five years when he had maybe masters or phd and now the nature of questions of mcq he asks they still remain the same so these nuclear changes uh, it's very important for you to remember them gross tissue changes which occur in uh, irreversible cell changes are uh, cell injury you can observe coagulative or de uh, denaturation you can observe a uh, liquefactive or enzymatic digestion and also you can observe caches and the fat necrosis Actually, what happens in the um, irreversible cell injury is what we call as a necrosis. Irreversible cell injury in a pericardial cell death about an item comma necrosis. We shall discuss about cell death in the second session and we will discuss more what is necrosis and all of these categories of necrosis starting from coagulative, uh, liquefactive, and um, caches and fat necrosis. And we shall see what the difference between these uh, categories of necrosis and how they appear in a, a histological appearance now a uh, mechanism of pathogenesis of cell injury uh, kwamba cell injury inatokaje tulisema kwamba the way disease tend to happen is what we call as pathogenesis now tumeona kuhusu uh, the morphology or the appearance of cell injury how it appears in a microscopic level 
and now it appears in a macroscopic level now what are the mechanisms of pathogenesis of cell injury pathogenesis of cell injury depends on the type duration and the severity of stress that's the first thing it depends on the type of stress the duration and the severity of stress type duration how much it longs severity how extent it is then the second is the type the status and the adaptability of the target cell because the type duration and severity of stress it is the one among the factor but sometime when this uh, cell uh, which um, which is stressed it is strong that means it will be able uh, to handle that stress and the cell cannot be injured um, take an easy example which is uh, commonly seen in our daily life Kwamba, uh, we have the keratinized epithelium we have the keratinized epithelium kwenye viganja pamoja na kwenye migu kwenye viganja na kwenye migu now unaweza kuona kwamba hii migu huku chini it's like a mechanism kwamba Mungu alikuwa na akili kubwa aliweka this keratinized epithelium because hata ukitembea kwenye mawe haumi but what if kama umeambiwa piga push up na wakao wanatumia skin ya huku nyuma so what makes the pain to be different kwamba umetembea kwa miguu kwenye mawe miguu haijaumia haijawa na pain kubwa lakini umekuja umepiga push up na mikono unakuta maumivu yanakuwa makubwa what makes the pain difference it's because of the type the status and the adaptability of the target cell the target cells katika unyayo wa mguu na target cells za huku mikononi ambako unapiga push up they are quite different that's why uh, one side you feel pain and another side not Three is the underlying intracellular phenomena or reversal mechanism. So inategemea kama kuna uh, any underlying intracellular phenomena. Sometimes ni kwamba inawezekana kuna all causes of cell injury lakini there are intracellular phenomena which prevent the occurrence of this uh, cell injury, the underlying intracellular phenomena. And four is the morphologic consequences eh, morphologic consequences hiyo ni factor ya nne so for some injurious agents the biological platform of attack is well defined eh, for example in some of the of the, of the injurious agent we know that it will attack let's say glycolysis eh, citric acid as eh, cycle or oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria in a membrane for example the best example in this case is our friend cyanide cyanide eh, cn negative this ion tend to uh, tend to bind one of the uh, enzyme in the oxidative phosphorylation eh, cytochrome oxidase it binds on the cytochrome oxygen and by that means it um, prevents the it prevents the oxidative phosphorylation to occur and then finally even the Krebs cycle will stop because the end product of Krebs cycle will be accumulating in the cell kwa hiyo ni kwamba for these agents the mechanism of their pathogenesis tend to be known but not for all agents common biochemical pathway of cell injury common is in a common biochemical uh, pathway Yaani uh, mara nyingi agent zote za cell injury zinapitia huko. Agent zote za cell injury zinapitia huko. Kwanza ni ATP depletion au ATP. ATP kama unavyojua ATP inatengenezwa nini? Kuna oxidative phosphorylation pamoja na glycolysis. Krebs cycle inatengeneza ATP lakini Krebs cycle yenyewe inatengeneza ATP chache sana. ATP nyingi ni zile nadi na fadi zinazotoka kwenye Krebs cycle zinaenda kwenye electron transport chain ndo zinatengeneza a lot of ATP na zile nadi zinazotoka i mean nadi h eh, reduced nadi zinazotoka kwenye glycolysis kwenda kwenye oxidative phosphorylation ndizo ambazo zinaproduce a vast amount of energy unaona kwa tunavozungumzia ATP depletion tunavozungumzia eh, mechanism ya ku deplete ATP tunazungumzia hichi kitu kwenda kuinhibit one of these two processes either oxidative phosphorylation and glycolysis 
and one of the major targeted part is the oxidative phosphorylation. Why? It's because it produces a vast amount of ATP as compared to glycolysis. But also another pathway of cell injury is the oxygen and oxygen derived free radical, what you call it the reactive oxygen species. Mm -hmm. There are what you call it the reactive oxygen species. These they call the oxidative damage of the of the cell. And that's why to an organelle like uh, microbodies which have a high amount of peroxide within the cell so as to pro to prevent the oxidative image of the cell. Another mechanism is the loss of calcium homeostasis, intracellular calcium accumulation. Intracellular calcium accumulation, you can see that uh, what is the link between calcium and uh, cell injury and things like that? Actually, calcium is one among of the very important ions to be maintained in the cell. Mm, despite its function of regulating the muscle contraction in the muscles, but it is important in all cells because uh, when it, um, it is just released in the cell, it can lead to uh, the progressive cell death known as apoptosis, as I will shall discuss later. So, calcium will super maintain visually in a perichial cell death. And then uh, the defect in the selective, selective permeable, uh, selective membrane permeability, uh, that means the characteristics of all form of cell injury. Malanying cell injury in Ezekiel and Tokyo Kosbabu cell membrane in a shindo kuchagua vitu kosai. Malake kuna vitu cell membrane in Tokyo is select and then kuna vitu in Tokyo is Again, cell membrane in Kichukua Vyote, Malake that means finally some of them can be poisoned and they can lead to the death of the cell. Responses to cell injury. After cell injury has happened, what will happen to the body now? Mm -hmm. Cell injury can lead to lysosomal catabolism, residue body, eh, lipofusin, lip, lip and pigment glanules. Unona. Eh, lysosomal catabolism, manake ni kwamba lysosome, is in a tend to digest different organs of the cell, and then they in a form with no vital residue body. Hopefully, in your, um, your advanced level cytology, you discuss, uh, you learn about the residue body and uh, lysosome. This is the body which is out of the lysosome has a digested different contents of the cell. Onona, call lysosomal catabolism in a tengen as a residue body. Lakini pia kunezo kwa kuna lipofusin pamoja na pigment granules kama huko tutaenda kuona huko baadaye tutakapo kuenda ku discuss vitu kwenye detail unaona induction au hypertrophy of smooth endoplasmic reticulum hypertrophy hypertrophy that means increasing in size hypertrophy kitu kinakuwa kubwa hyper hmm, is large big trophy size so hypertrophy that means smooth endoplasmic reticulum becomes large also your mitochondrial alterations in the number the size the shape such as in cell hypertrophy and the atrophy hypertrophy ni cell kwa kubwa atrophy ni cell kwa ndogo wakati cell makuwa kubwa au inaenda kwa ndogo mitochondrial number they always change white because uh, mitochondria they increase in number as the requirement of energy is required in the body. Then, irreversible cell injury. Irreversible cell injury. This is that in cell death, and there are three types. Cell death to necrosis, infraction, na apoptosis. Is on the cell death. Necrosis, infraction, apoptosis. Irreversible cell injury. Eh? Types of necrosis, you know, requifative, coagulative caches and traumatic or fat necrosis it is sometimes uh, known as traumatic the patterns of necrosis in tissue or organs as the result of cell death the tissues or organs display certain microscopic changes kunaweza kuwa kuna changes ambazo zinakuwa zinatokea katika tissue au organs kwa sababu ya kwa sababu ya destruction kwa sababu ya death ya organ kwanza kuna coagulative necrosis coagulative necrosis uh, the outer end of the dead cell are maintained and the tissue is somewhat firm example myocardial infraction here pa 
tutaenda ku discuss kipindi kijacho cell death tutaona in detail na tutaona how uh, the slides of these types of necrosis they look like unaona katika cognitive necrosis manake ni kwamba ile organ inabaki na muundo wake ule ule normal structure of the organ unaona inabaki na muundo ule ule ndio maana sema the outline of dead cell are maintained and the tissues are somewhat firm manake inakuwa vile vile ni kama haijaribika ile na kipande cha side zilizo haribika but also we have liquefactive necrosis liquefactive necrosis sometimes is known as enzymatic because as the enzymes they digest the dead cells and after digesting the dead cell that means what happens it it looks like a liquid eh? there is a, like a liquid of dead cell there mm. the dead cells undergo disintegration and affected tissue is liquefied it becomes a liquid it is liquefied example the cerebral infraction eh? here is my cardiac infraction the best example but here it is the cerebral infraction uh, causing the brain But also we have the Kesher's necrosis Kesher's necrosis a form of cognitive necrosis a form of cognitive necrosis eh? cheese like example tuberculosis lesions um Kesher's necrosis inafanana na cognitive necrosis kivipi tusema cognitive necrosis outline of the dead cell are maintained and the tissue are somewhat firm maana ke tissue inabaki kama ilivyokuwa sasa kesha za necrosis tissue inabaki kama ilivyokuwa eh, organ inabaki kama ilivyokuwa lakini kuna kwa kuna cheese like ni kama vile umetia chili yani kama ni kwenye pafu tuberculosis lesion hizi uh, lesions zinazotokana na na kifua kikuu lesion tuli we discussed yesterday what is the lesion so the lesion resulting from tuberculosis the lesions regarding are uh, resulting from tuberculosis they have a uh, cheese like ni kama vile you have put a chili umeweka chili unaona pia tuna fat necrosis this is the enzymatic digestion of fat example necros necrosis of fat by pancreatic enzyme unaona bwana so the enzymatic digestion of fat and then you have the gangrenous necrosis um, gangrenous necrosis this is the necrosis secondary to ischemia what is ischemia what is ischemia ischemia ni kile kitendo cha tissue kukosa oxygen so as long as um tissue inakosa oxygen uh, na inakosa blood supply that means ile tissue inaanza kukauka ndio nakuta kama mguu unaanza kuwa black and then finally unakauka kabisa unaanza kuwa black na baadaye unakauka that's gangrenous necrosis usually with the superimposed infection example necrosis of distal limbs usually foot and toes in diabetes this is normally seen in diabetes mellitus patients this marks the end of our second session and um in pathology and i tend to memorize you that um if you don't know the normal functioning of the cell just go in the description and then you can see the uh, the link but also i emphasize you to share these sessions to your fellow students uh, all over the world to share these sessions to your fellow students all over tanzania so that you understand a lot and a lot of things in a uh, in a um, pathology thank you and let i wish nice studies if you have any comment you can drop it below thank you